What's up, restorative family? Hey, everybody. Docs are here. Yeah. Few of us. Yeah. We're missing one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're super excited to yeah. talk with you all today. Um, it's been a while since we've been on yeah. together. Yeah. Um, as we've had this major transition in our lives and moving to our new office. Um, so really what we wanted to talk to you guys about today is um, some emerging research in, the, in, in COVID-19 in particular um, and really understanding the immune system. Um, so this, you know, we're going to talk about some controversial things and we really, right off the bat, don't want this to be um, framed as a, a pro-vaccine or an anti-vaccine conversation. We're really trying to elevate and um, lay a foundation and a framework of the immune system, really so that you guys are gonna have this understanding so that you can make the best decisions for you and your loved ones. And that's really the emphasis of this today. Yeah, I think that's the best way to talk about it. And you know, from the medical world, uh, I'm going to say, you know, vaccines are out there and vaccines have done a lot of good things. We know about polio and dropping out a lot of other diseases, etc. but they also have negative consequences. What does a vaccine do? A vaccine is actually a way to manipulate or to mimic your own body's immune system. And that's why it's so important to talk about our immune systems. So a vaccine is, it, it, and you guys all know right now with COVID, Oh my gosh, you can't even breathe without hearing somebody talk about, the, I got to get a vaccine, I got to do this, I got to do all these other things too. And just like Ashley said, we're not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, obviously, we want people to get healthy and we want people to be strong. We want their immune system to be strong. There's a lot of people out there that need to have those vaccines because their immune system isn't strong or they have so many other comorbidities, etc. But we want people to be knowledgeable about these things. We want people to have an informed consent about these things so that you know what you're getting into and what to expect. And, and that's where some of our concerns are. Why aren't we talking more about natural immunity? Why aren't we talking about what people that have had been in, infected and have antibodies and, and are, are recovering from that? Why aren't we talking more about what that means and implies to everybody? Um, and also, you know, we're talking about some newer technologies as well. So these messenger RNA vaccines, the two that are available right now, they're the only ones available right now. Um, yeah, everybody says, oh, they've been around. And they've really only been around for about seven years. Why haven't we had a messenger RNA vaccine developed before now? Why aren't we seeing newer and better, you know, tetanus vaccines, etc., made from messenger RNA? I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to say that we need to know more about long-term effects with some of these vaccines in order for us to kind of say, oh, okay, this is great, let's go out and do that. Now there's a couple of other vaccines that are now in those phase threes um, that will be more of a, a double-stranded DNA type of vaccine, something more like what we're used to, especially like the Johnson & Johnson one, which is also a single-dose vaccine and you're gonna be monitoring antibodies and making sure that your body is developing that immunity that it would do on its own like it should be doing as well. So, you know, we know in the past that there have been other vaccines that have been approved that have gotten recalled um, and it was because of autoimmune long-term effects. So I think what we're gonna talk a lot about is that, but also recognizing what Kevin and I have been talking about for months, and Ashley as well. Since March. <laughs> Hello. Okay. The videos are on YouTube. <laughs> Vitamin D, getting your sleep, doing all the things to boost your immune system, you personally, so that you can develop a better way to fight off any infection, let alone SARS-CoV-2. Yeah. And I mean, I think that you know, that is really the key piece is that we have an amazing God-given thing in our immune system. Are there times and places? Yes. Do we tend to see informed consent really being given? And the answer is no. And I think part of the concern right now is that we just don't know enough. We don't know enough. And when it comes to COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, we have 
the potential for a lot of autoimmune triggers to arise. There's a lot of very interesting data that's coming out. Some of this was first talked about in the Journal of Clinical Immunology back in um, May, actually, of 2020. Potential antigenic cross-reactivity, I mean, molecular mimicry, where one thing looks enough like SARS-CoV-2 and human tissue with a possible link to an increase in autoimmune disease. Maybe we should describe autoimmune disease in the immune system. So the immune system is a beautiful coordinated effort to identify and neutralize any foreign invader that comes into the body. Various immune cells and tissues and organs and chemical messengers are involved in a very complex, intricate <laughs> yeah. immune response. So what can happen is, you know, we, we, we talk about antigens a lot in, in autoimmunity, but what can happen through molecular mimicry or epitope spreading or bystander activation, these various mechanisms that trigger the body to have a misguided immune response. So rather than attacking COVID-19 or EBV or aluminum or gluten or whatever, the body misinterprets and looks at certain proteins within the body and starts attacking those instead. So this is sort of the mechanism, we're gonna talk a lot more about this, but we need to understand that all these foreign invaders have the ability to be the triggering event for an autoimmune disease. Now, an autoimmune disease can take three to 18 years to develop too. So you can kind of see as we're, you know, drawing a concern here from something that is brand new that we don't have three to 18 year studies on. It's a kind of concerning. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately we've learned from the past, there have been things that have been approved. I mean, thalidomide, DES, Gardasil, these other things that have been already approved that looked great initially yeah. and then down the road caused a problem, okay? You gotta remember too, I'll just say one other thing about the COVID vaccines. You gotta remember that even when you go onto the websites and stuff right now, the, the COVID vaccines don't say that you can't get reinfected, don't prevent you from infection. So think about it almost like a flu shot. A flu shot, so that you guys all have dealt with these, flu shots do not prevent you from getting influenza. What they do is they, they hopefully not lock down or, or knock down the risk for the potential complications of it. And that's kind of what we're talking about here with this stuff. All these people that have all these comorbidities are dying that's really the purpose of doing these vaccines. So unfortunately, we're still going to have to do all these other social distancing things, etc. cetera. And, and you know what? So why not let our body's immune system do what it needs to do best mm -hmm. and try to avoid some of the potential, you know, steamroller. I mean, you like, like Ashley's saying and kind of saying, when that autoimmune system, or not autoimmune, when your immune system gets activated, Sometimes it just keeps on going, okay? And, and that, you get and one autoimmune yeah. disease, and then it's the next one, and the next one. Yeah. Like it's, we see it all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It just is a snowball effect. So personal responsibility, start doing all the things that we've talked about for months. Make sure that you're getting your sleep, doing your exercise, watching your blood sugars. Make yeah. sure that you're being careful with that kind of stuff. We've, got, we've, ta we've already ta started talking about post viral syndrome like there's obviously a virus we're not downplaying that yeah. we are trying to emphasize the importance of the immune response as we walk through this so the personal responsibility yeah. for yeah. our own <laughs> lifestyle factors that guide and influence yeah. one's ability to combat and deal with an infection of any sort or SARS-CoV-2 <laughs> if that happens to be the pathogen that we come in contact yeah. with well we, we live in a funny country we live in a country where you want to take a pill and it's done and taken care of, okay? We want to get a vaccine, and it's done and taken care of. Well, so that's what our comment yeah. is. It's uncomfortable is, talking start, about start responsibility, right? Y'all exactly. are smart people. We have faith that you can make good decisions for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just to tie on to the one article I was saying, you guys yeah. can look this one up as well. It, it came from uh, uh, Dr. Aristo Vigidani and Dr. Datis Karazian. It literally just came out. In, brilliant, brilliant minds. Yeah, in Frontiers in Immunology. And the title of the article from January says, Reaction of Human Monoclonal Antibodies, Human Tissues, to SARS-CoV-2 Proteins 
with the antigens. Implications for autoimmune diseases. And I think what's interesting to note, and they, you know, I'm not gonna, we could have a two hour video here on all of this and I'm not gonna do that. But I think just, you know, if I even, if I can find where I underlined, there we go, as I read through this here. I wanna just like hit a couple tiny snippets because you're gonna see the breadth of potential, potential, keyword, autoimmune triggering uh, uh, tissues that could be impacted as a result of SARS-CoV-2. That could be via potentially a vaccine introduction of things or natural exposure. I'm gonna ex yeah. and make sure that that's clear, okay? Mm -hmm. But it says these SARS-CoV-2 antibodies reacted from low to very high with 28 out of 55 tissue antigens that were tested. This included gut and barrier proteins, gastrointestinal- Blood -brain barrier too, I, I wanna make sure they understand. It's gut barrier and I'm, blood -brain I'm barrier. Gonna get there. <laughs> gastrointestinal <laughs> system cells, thyroid, nervous system, heart, joint, skin, muscle, mitochondria and liver tissues and antigens used for the screening of autoimmune disease. It reacted the strongest with neurofilament protein. Okay, nuclear antigen, M2 or mitochondrial antibodies, GAD65, TPO, and liver enzyme um, reactions. So we're seeing some significant potential for cross reactivity or autoimmune triggering mechanisms by the immune system if we are compromised. Guess what impacts autoimmune disease propensity and progression? It is lifestyle pieces. And so that's why we keep hammering this over and over the personal responsibility for health, because if somebody is exposed naturally or artificially to a pathogen of any kind, you might see a trigger towards that. And are we doing everything we can to equip our immune system to not have a case of mistaken identity against our own tissues, our brains, our guts, our livers, our mitochondria, or any other important tissue. Um, you know, there's not spare ones there. We, we can't, we don't want any of them to be attacked, mislabeled, misidentified. Yeah, and I think it's also worth noting, we're only talking about COVID-19. We would probably have a stack of all the other viral illnesses that can initiate similar autoimmune reactions. Guys, this is just, we're just discussing this because it's like the big topic right now. But we, and there's blogs coming on this, there's content, but there, this, any virus, bacteria, environmental toxin, parasite, okay. candida, so many things can trigger this. It's not just a virus. Um, I wanted to take a, a moment. So Aristotle Jadani is, probably the world's leading immunologist. So when he speaks, I listen. Um, so I wanted to just um, give a couple quotes from that article. His words, not mine. So he says, an insufficiently vetted vaccine might mean trading freedom from COVID-19 to an autoimmune result, assault in the future. So he's drawing attention here. Okay, we have to decide for ourselves what the cost is here. Is it trading this supposed freedom from COVID-19, which you're still going to be exposed to, it's just how severe you might succumb to it, versus a potential autoimmune triggering event. He also goes on to say, um, immunologists, who focus on autoimmunity have been concerned whether the infection or even a newly developed vaccine itself itself can trigger auto, autoimmunity via cross reactivity. So he really is summing up here what we've been saying, but this is again right in that research article. Guys, you, we'll link it, you can read it for yourself um, and, and make the most informed decision that you can. Um, we're gonna be discussing in the future too, just again, things that you can do to bolster your immune system if you have had this viral infection or any viral infection or if you have an autoimmune disease hello like i've written a whole book on this <laughs> this <laughs> there are things that you can do to help your body um, if you find yourself in post viral syndrome um, 
post-COVID syndrome, however you want to describe it, if you have an autoimmune disease already, um, and a lot more to come on that. I'm sure we're going to be gathering yeah. to talk here. Yeah. We'll discuss yeah, that well. one in the future. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. just an introduction. So that's yeah. good. This is purely information for informed consent. We're not taking one side or the other. But we really want you guys to know you have a beautiful immune system that yeah. is ready to work for you, given the right environment. Good. I'm good. Hope you have a great rest of the week, everybody. We look forward to uh, chatting soon. And we're going to be seeing a whole lot more of these videos, as I kind of mentioned on the one before. But for Dr. Ash's followers, um, a lot more content coming on these various things now that we're in the new space and have the ability to kind of think a little bit more than uh, <laughs> hammers and screwdrivers yeah, here. Yeah. We can start getting back to some good content. So yeah. hope you have a great rest of the week, everybody. Love y'all. Thank care. you.